In today's news, NASA named an asteroid after the German physicist and science communicator Sabine Hossenfelder. This is not a joke. I got an email about five weeks ago from someone who said he works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in the Small Body Group. At any other place, that would be the local kindergarten, I guess. But at NASA, the Small Body Group is concerned with, well, asteroids, comets and other small things that fly around in space, like, for example, my daughter's left shoe on Monday morning. So the NASA guy writes... They're about to name the next set of asteroids, and he wants to propose that one is named after me. Sabine Hossenfelder is unfortunately too long, as that's more than 16 characters. So what would I suggest, he asks. Just between you and I, I almost put this email into the bin. Had I not, on this very morning, seen a call from NASA on Twitter asking to submit new suggestions for asteroid names. Coincidence. It was coincidence. I looked up his IP address and sure enough, it points to somewhere near Maryland. What did you have done? I replied to him and said, how about just Sabina? But it turns out there already is an asteroid by name Sabina. It was discovered in 1908 by a German living in Heidelberg. His name was Karl Wilhelm Lorenz. He died aged 32 from the Spanish flu. Very tragic. I imagine that Sabina was his girlfriend. In any case, I said to the NASA guy, just make it hossy then, because that's what they called me in school, what with my long family name and all. And here we go. Now there's an asteroid called Hossi. It's in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, about 500 million kilometers or so away from Earth. It's mostly rocky rather than icy, goes around the sun about once every three and a half years and has a diameter between 3.5 and 6 kilometers. It was discovered in September 1993 by the Belgian astronomer Eric Elst, who died in 2022. Elst discovered more than 3,000 asteroids and didn't name this one. So now it's called Hossi and I'm very proud of it. Unfortunately, no one's taken an image of my asteroid, so I made one myself. Here we go. I actually feel bad now because I so rarely talk about asteroids. It's because on the occasions that I did talk about asteroids, no one really seemed to care. And yeah, you know, I get it. Because from one point of view, asteroids are just rocks floating around in space and a rock is a rock is a rock on the other hand some of those rocks are more the size of mountains and on occasion one of them falls down on us indeed asteroid impacts are one of the biggest existential threats that our species faces this is why nasa and some other space agencies are working on ways to identify asteroids that come our way early figure out how large they are and what they're made of quickly and try to find a way to redirect them in case that ever becomes necessary. I've been thrilled that NASA took on the challenge with the DART mission that they let crash into the asteroid Dimorphos in 2022. The European Space Agency contributes to this project with its own spacecraft HERA that's on the way to Dimorphos to figure out what effect the impact had. HERA is expected to arrive in 2026. Of all the scientific research that's being done on this entire planet, asteroids are without doubt one of the most important ones and also one of the most underappreciated ones. Maybe they just shouldn't call them small bodies. That sounds kind of lame. Flying mountains, dinosaur killers, hunker junks. But it's not just the dinosaur killing that makes small bodies interesting. They're also scientifically interesting. That's because they're really old, billions of years. And some of them quite possibly came from outside our solar system. Some scientists even think that life on Earth might have come from elsewhere. And if it did, then it probably came on some small body that hit Earth. Last but not least, asteroids are becoming commercially interesting. I know it sounds crazy to launch a spacecraft and fly millions of miles to dig on an asteroid rather than doing it here. But you have to keep in mind that 
A, mining is also expensive on Earth, and the less expensive space travel becomes, the more interesting asteroid mining gets. And B, you might not even want to bring the stuff back down to Earth. You could use asteroids as stepping stones for space travel. You can harvest resources there, including water that has been found frozen on many asteroids, and build your spacecraft there, or at least repower them. So yes, asteroids are rocks, but they're very interesting rocks. This will get a top entry on my list of bragging rights. Twin birth without caesarean. Marathon in less than four hours. Asteroid named after me. That definitely wasn't on my bingo card for 2024. Space potato, anyone? It's been 18 months since I had this idea of doing science news on YouTube. And let me just say, it's taken some time to get it to work. Luckily, I've had Skillshare to rely on, and that's been a great help. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes by and for creators. They cover specific disciplines such as film and design, but also general topics such as freelancing and productivity in general. To help you get started, Skillshare offers learning paths to gradually build your knowledge from beginner to expert, like this one on creative productivity, kickstart and sustain any project. It's a great course from people with experience experience in a number of different professions, including video creation. It has tons of practical advice for how to reliably come up with new ideas, how to become better at time management, and how to break down big projects into manageable chunks. This course has really decreased my stress levels. If you're looking to start something new or expand your creative skills, Skillshare is the best place to do it. If you go there, make sure to use our link because the first 500 of you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go and check it out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.